For the last couple of years, I've had a chance to review more than 500 Magento 2 modules. And in this video, I would like to share with you top five things I don't see in Magento 2 modules and you don't create as a Magento 2 developer. First of all, there is no uninstall script. Uninstall script in Magento 2 is used to uninstall data schema in the database, whether you have tables created or columns added to existing core Magento 2 uh, tables or any data added like core config data, table, EAV attributes or maybe some CMS blocks, CMS widgets, CMS pages and so on. And depending on um, complexity of your module or purpose of your module, an install script can um, uninstall or delete data, delete schema changes from a database. Unfortunately, in Magento 2 modules I reviewed, there, there is almost no uninstall script used and it means that for your potential customers, for potential websites that might use your Magento 2 module, the moment they will install a module, they will not be able to uninstall it properly unless your module doesn't have any schema or data changes in a database. So uninstall script is used to uninstall all the data, all schema, and it would be a good practice if you would start including uninstall scripts together with install scripts. So once you created a script that installs something in a database, please make sure to cover uninstall operation because not all Magento 2 stores wants to continue using a Magento 2 module and in this case it would be a good idea, a good opportunity for you as a Magento 2 developer to uh, make uh, this um, script, uninstall script that will help to uninstall all unnecessary changes in a database. Second uh, thing that I don't see quite often, basically I don't see at all if you would ask me about Magento marketplace or extensions that can be purchased uh, from uh, various third-party vendors, Magento 2 focused vendors, it's missing unit tests. So unit tests are used to check a unit of code, it's basically a method test or class test that helps to uh, ensure that there is no uh, issues, there is no high coupling inside the source code implemented. And it allows developers to test their code uh, while they write this Magento 2 uh, modular functionality. So Magento 2 modules I reviewed, they lack of unit tests. I understand that unit test is not something we as Magento 2 developers can sell and in most cases customer, client who purchases Magento 2 extension doesn't really care whether or not you have unit tests in the module because by the end of the day unit tests are not used for production environment. However, there are some agencies, some developers who are responsible for installing this uh, Magento 2 extensions for a client or customer on a production environment. They would be thankful if you will include unit tests into your Magento 2 module. Or there is a situation when, for example, a Magento 2 module um, requires some customization or some change. So it would be a good idea to include unit tests so a developer, another developer can run this uh, test and ensure that uh, there are no changes or problems with the classes, with the methods implemented. A third one, a third problem, third thing that I don't see in Magento 2 modules is integration tests. Obviously, integration tests is something that adds 
value to your Magenta 2 extension or functionality implemented as part of that extension and integration tabs helps to ensure that there are no um, functional issues within Magenta 2 extension. And it helps to verify that uh, a flow, for example, a request that goes through your module, through your functionality, whether it's controller, model, service, uh, it allows to verify that your functionality, once installed into a Magento 2 application, works without problems. And integration tests help to develop faster. Not in terms of writing integration tests versus writing pure functionality without integration and unit tests, but uh, when you will spend some time on planning your integration tests, building functionality, covering your functionality with integration tests, especially when you work with uh, in an agency that builds uh, Magento 2 modules for distribution, and it's important to ensure that your Magento 2 module works with different versions of Magento 2, and it allows you to create next feature within Magento 2 module execute integration tests and ensure that there are no problems with your existing functionality and with the new functionality you introduced in Magento 2 module that you don't break any other functionality. Also integration tests help to verify if they are written properly, if they don't rely on a storefront design or SIM implementation. Integration tests help to for, for merchants to, uh, to ensure that functionality of your module works as expected on their installation. So they can reuse this integration test, run on their own environment, and ensure that everything works when it comes to your uh, Magento 2 module. And if you are new to Magento 2 development and you would like to learn more about best practices on how to develop Magento 2 extensions, or you would like to onboard on Magento 2 development, I would like to recommend you Mage Mastery website. MageMastery.net website provides you a bunch of online courses, educational materials, exams, quizzes that will help you to become a better Magento 2 developer. So if you are looking to grow or go to the next step of your professional career and you would like to be a professional Magento 2 developer, I would highly recommend you to visit Magento MageMastery.net and learn Magento 2 from a very basics um, and grow step by step as a Magento 2 developer. So make sure to check out MageMastery.net and let me know in the comments below what you think about this video and what techniques or things you are missing uh, when working with other Magento 2 uh, modules. Fourth, uh, it's going to be a missing composer dependencies. Unfortunately, uh, those modules I reviewed, they, in most cases, they miss composer dependency. What I mean by composer dependencies? So when you build a Magento 2 module, it's a third-party module compared to Magento Core out-of-box modules. There is a composer JSON file that helps to install your module um, as, as all other modules. So it's a composer package manager who is responsible uh, for managing all the dependencies, including your modules. And when there is no other dependencies or dependencies that your module relies on in a require section, it means that uh, a potential Magento 2 store would be broken. Why I say this? Because if there are no required sen section in a composer JSON file of your Magento 2 extension, it means that a developer who installs your module, he or she doesn't know about all dependencies, about all the restrictions of your module. So basically your module that is implemented and works in Magento 2.4 will not or might not work with Magento 2.3. And require section will help a developer to understand and get the idea whether or not this module is compatible with Magento 2.3. When running command composer require and name of a module, 
It will show whether it's possible to install your extension with the current Magento 2 application. It's really important to have it. The other thing that might be a good uh, in terms of development is a Composer Require section. A Composer Require Dev section. Uh, this section allows to list all uh, development dependencies like PHP unit, for example. If you, by any chance, have unit and integration tests or one of the tests, it would be a good practice to include PHP unit library dependency into require dev section. So a developer who uses your extension will see that there is a required dev uh, PHP unit dependency and will understand that there are some tests that can be executed for your extension. So require section, require dev section is a good thing to consider when building Magento 2 extension. And it helps to simplify life of other developers. Or if you will be installing a third party Magento 2 extension, it would be almost no hassle for you to understand whether a module is compatible with your version of Magento 2. Uh, the other thing that I don't see quite often is usage of service classes. And what I see is uh, usage of helper classes. So the difference between helper and service class is that a helper as a class, unfortunately, uh, uses a parent a class called abstract helper or abstract data or data. Uh, and this class, when it's created, it has no strict um, responsibility that we can say that this is a helper class that is responsible for only one thing. And the helper, in most cases, in Magento 2 modules I reviewed, these helpers are responsible for a variety of other things that are not related to a, a class name or a purpose of a class. So basically, in a helper, there is no purpose. Uh, when it comes to service classes, service class doesn't extend any parent classes. It may implement some interfaces, and there is a, I would say, a single responsibility that can be included into service class with uh, one or few uh, methods, public methods, that uh, we can combine in a single class and call it uh, service directory and have a purpose of a PHP class that is a service class and this class can be used basically cover it with a, an interface and interface can be used in other uh, modules like an API of your current uh, Magento 2 module. What it means is that if you will move from helpers to services and by service I mean at least start of writing one PHP public method per uh, service class and remove this uh, dependency from a parent helper class. Your source code, your Magento 2 implementation would be way more cleaner, way more straightforward, and you would have less issues going forward and with compatibility issues. And by the way, helpers is not a thing that is recommended for Magento 2 uh, module. So make sure to check your Magento 2 modules that you are responsible for and don't write helpers and consider using services. And the last thing, it's six, um, so it's a bonus thing, is that I don't see usage of uh, translations. So I don't see CSV files. Basically a CSV file or I18N a directory uh, provides uh, an internal internationalization uh, capability of a Magento 2 extension. What it means is that you can translate your uh, text that is rendered as part of your extension and you can translate to different languages. So it's really important if you are selling your ex Magento 2 extension to include at least one file that is en underscore us.csv and provide all uh, text phrases that are used in your Magento 2 extension. It will help other developers to translate your um, CSV file and 
create, for example, a German translation or Ukrainian translation and so on. So it's really important if you are selling or distributing your extension to include I18N um, translation file. So it's at least one of the translation files or CSV files that can be reused uh, or used as a base for other translations. So these are my top six things that I reviewed and I don't see in 99% uh, of the extensions, Magento 2 extensions. And I would really hope to see after this video, after you watch this video, uh, in your new extensions or new versions of your uh, Magento 2 extensions on Magento Marketplace or whether you are uh, selling your extensions on your website. Make sure to subscribe to this channel if you like uh, this type of content and leave me a comment um, with your question or suggestions on how I can improve uh, videos moving forward. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video. Bye.